this talks about the rig which we built, which is when you're looking at this diagram, you see these two lines at the bottom called interior datum and exterior datum. They represent surfaces that we generated underside of the bridge, offsetting originally the um, bottom of structural voxel, BSV, and then manipulating that surface. And so there's two surfaces, and <clears throat> pardon me, in subsequent slides, you'll see those surfaces. Actually, you want to go to the next slide? And um, yeah. that shows the surfaces. So each one of those represents versions in which the interior and the exterior datum play a game with each other, right? And can you go back up one more slide? Mm -hmm. What that does, uh, no, actually, uh, so to slide, what is it, 46? Yep. Yep, there we go. So in this, the red and blue lines, you see them in the um, you know, axonometric or perspective view up there. But those represent uh, vertices, which we, again, I could change the order of and have it not be a, you know, a sharp intersection, but it could be a softened edge. And um, by reversing the relationship inside to outside, you can get, you know, literally innies or outies, you know, where, where the um, ones in the back are kind of protruding past the blue ring, which is the outside line that they're on. The reds in the back are all positive. Yeah. And the ones on the lower side, you have these innies, you know, where the inside surface is dominating. And then we have control over the aperture of all of those in relation to each other, you know, by controlling that with a little slider. Right. So there's the blue surfaces, aperture has a game with the, um, and in some there'd be a huge hole and just a little bit of massing. In others you see a ton of massing and a tiny little hole. And that was um, definable. And so our versions were games of playing with the two surfaces in topography and the Z and the shape, and then playing with influence curves to change those apertures in relation to each other. And I was saying to Mark earlier that we, in order to see these correctly, we had to render them out and do video walkthroughs, you know, so that you could actually um, uh, review them later. So one of the guys, Sam, would make a set of videos. We made hundreds of these videos and um, it was very memory intensive. But to be able to review them, you had to see them in situ, you know, and so uh, the walkthroughs were, uh, it was just a very useful tool that we built. So. So, so let me ask you a question. So you're referring to uh, this visual voxel rig. So sort of in layman's terms, terms uh, it's a grasshopper definition that you've built, um, correct? Yes. Um, and it has, as you're saying, you have various um, parametric controls that control, as you said, uh, the, the Z direction uh, for the red lines and the Z direction for the blue lines, as well as uh, the aperture, which I think you're representing here with this sort of dashed black line in the middle. Um, and um, I guess, so, and then you mentioned that you're using influencers, um, almost like the, uh, the classic grasshopper kind of um, you know, tutorial where, right, where you have the, the point and everything close to the point has a, you know, a certain, you know, bigger, bigger radius and everything further away has a, a smaller radius. So, um, so I get that part. Um, what were you using? Were you using similar, uh, points sort of in their, in their, uh, in their Z location maybe to, to, to influence the, uh, the Z direction of the red and the blue lines? No, there would be a set of law curves that were, um, you uh, know, spline, splines that were generated that would, they were longer axes tools, you know, they were, we had sets of lines in the... So, so it was maybe something like, you know, the, 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 the greater that, well, as maybe that, those lines, um, you know, as they moved in sort of in, in space, the higher, the higher they were, uh, the greater their Z value, then that was influencing um, the, the, the red and the, the blue lines. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, a little tea leaf moment as well that you, you know, can have a three axis relationship with the attractor and, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be up to the operator to generate the vibe. And so if you go to the next set of images, which are the next one after, which is mm -hmm. the versions, you know, you can start to see, um, Again, you're making the set to get the feedback to say, okay, well, I'm going to fine tune it a different direction here. I'm going to change my incremental assumptions down to X mm -hmm. or Y, you know. And um, so 
each one of these we ran because they were so um, operator intensive. We ran versions which were a set of curves were adjusted, a geometry was created, and then a set of secondary variables were adjusted, like for the apertures. And so we could use that same move in multiple different ways. And so when you look at these, you know, there's a general geometry that's going on in here, and then the secondary geometry influences the primary geometry, but basically they're all the same primary geometric move that you're seeing in this upper left is propagating out, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just depending on whether you're opening up or closing the cells. And so we would go through the exercise, painful as it might be, of, of you know, adjusting it minorly and doing it as a faceted piece and then making secondary adjustments, doing it as a faceted piece, and then coming back and, you know, doing it as a um, smoothed out set as well. So it's mm -hmm. extremely um, labor intensive, but that's, you know, the point where the operator starts to really vibe the piece, then you start to get some production out of it and things go fast by the end. So if you go to the next image, I think there's a, another set of views, you know, in which we present these in, um, you know, two or three or four sets at a time, have a conversation about it, make some minor adjustments, you know, and go back at it. So. And that's the rig again, it's the black and white version. And these are um, some high density foam pieces that we milled on the mill. And this particular one starts to talk about, you know, the introduction of color and that gap that was driven between the um, side walls of the, uh, you know, starting to shape that area and allow that to bring in a whole different um, scale of pattern and color into the underside. So, but then, And that's built onto the piece that we had just built previously. Uh -huh. So then now this one is the tile. We can go through this quickly. I think we're up close to the mm -hmm. time. But uh, this is another zoomed in sectional view. So looking at the tile system. Yeah, go ahead. You can go to the next one. So this is, you want to show your little, yeah, okay. So this is a tool that we built using um, the original voxel packing and um, as a video you could run this and then uh, take screen captures, freeze it and take screen captures and then do studies, color, change the color layers, change um, you know the fills and uh, do some analysis to try and generate some patterns that would be on top of the tile system itself. So we were going to take these triangulated tiles and um, incise on it a pattern that tied out over the whole top of the skin. So Awesome. And this was a little dynamic tool that was very helpful. And it's a tool you built in, again, in Grasshopper? Yeah, and then recorded the video. And then, But you know what's nice about it is that you can send this on and um, you know, it's reusable for, for some other things as well, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a high degree of utility.